Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, it's been about a month and David's been busy in Europe and hard to get a hold of with internet, so it's a treat to have him back on. And I was just, um, yeah, in meditation before the show, I, I watched uh, about half an hour of a movie called St. Therese of La Sue yesterday. I don't even know how to say it, but La Sue or something. <laughs> And something really struck me where she was the saint, I think the saint of the little way or something, but she's 15 years old and went into this monastery and her sister went off to join the poor Clares and her other sister went to another monastery. It was like the whole family just went off to the monastery. But as each, as each of her older sisters was leaving, she would go dizzy and get disorientated. And then there was a scene at dinner where she just like passed out. And as soon as she passed out, I just like had this uncontrollable emotion that just ripped through me. Like, oh my God, that's the fear underneath everything. Like my whole life, our whole life or felt for me, my whole life is this abandonment. And it just plays out with these people. And yet it's this much deeper feeling. It's, it really wasn't understandable, but it was just so uncontrollable. So I just put out this deep prayer because so much has happened the last few weeks. Um, just with hopefully a deepening. <laughs> I just put out this prayer because I was losing track. Like, okay, is this the guidance? Is this the guidance? I couldn't, I couldn't keep track of it anymore. And, and then I just went to bed restful that night and woke up in the morning and just the only thing that kept going through my mind was I need to do nothing, I need to do nothing. And somehow it was stabilizing. I just felt a sense of, of peace and kind of like Anna read from The Peace of God is My One Goal on her show reading from Barbara Varley where she would just put out this prayer every morning, you know, show me the way and I leave the day to you. And she would just trust that she was guided and didn't need it to come as a lightning bolt or anything specific, but just went in this flow. And that really touched me because that's in line with, I need to do nothing. And, and yet I'm still, I feel I'm attracted to being active, but to be active and try to change the world, to make anything different. Like right now, it's outside of our street, there's a, it's snowing these days. And so the big grader has to come and we have to move our cars so that he can clear the road. But the post office had just redid their, their what do you call it, dry, uh, parking lot. And so they've parked their car. So now the tractor has to go around the mail thing and so he misses huge swaths of our area so we have all this snow in front of our <laughs> in front of our street and i'm like now do i go tell the u.s post office to move their truck so we can have more space is that changing the world or is it is it really guidance and so that's just one example but there's just this deep prayer to have every aspect of my life be turned over so that because there's a strong impulse, Andy and I have had some, shall I say, focused moments the last few days <laughs> where aspects of Spiri, you know, he's, he said, I'm the CEO of Spiri. I'm ready to take it on. And then the app gets released and, you know, he's, he says, that's not for me. And I'm like, you're the CEO of Spiri. How can you not take on? Literally. <laughs> The Spiri app and this huge emotion comes through and I have so much gratitude to be able to tell him this is your area take it on and I'm so grateful and and yeah and is I don't know I think I didn't even plan to have any questions for David I was just this is Jesus's show today let's just see where this goes it could be an open show for everyone David could talk but my prayer is to have this deeper question of answered of is it changing the world or is it guidance? Because right now, being such an active doer and ready to do anything, I can't, I can't tell the difference. And I really want to go into the mystic, but yeah. So thanks for being on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Well, you always would tell me, you said, I, I don't know, I'm not ready for the mysticism and I'm, I'm not ready for the mystic, but you be, be careful what you ask for. You might end up like Ramana Warwick with your little loincloth and as people are trying to get you to say a word, you're just watching the world go by. Because it, uh, yeah, I think in the end it's, it is, um, 
it is a surrender and it is a letting go of, um, uh, Lisa mentioned that on the previous show, even of responsibility, you know, it's like, it's so amazing to think that the only, the sole responsibility is to accept the atonement, which is a state of stillness and acceptance, and, and that there are no other, and that just seems so deep in a mind that's conditioned to roles and um, projects, and, and we truly do let it all be used, and that's why we, we do accept assignments, we take on projects, we take on all kinds of things, and and then you have to let go, or uh, you feel the the intensity, the frustration creep in there. So it sounds like it's just been a a typical <laughs> a typical week there, <laughs> frustrations and the call to let go. Yeah. Well, what, one of the things you had brought up, and one of we we'd only had like a really short call in the past few weeks. The other day, it was about 20 minutes, and you brought up the word complacency, and and for some reason it stuck with me, but it also, I think the ego has stuck with it, like it's, it only understands complacency in terms of doing, and and complacency really is, is whether you're, you're basically attentive to forgiveness or not, is how, is how I would see it at a mind level, but, but when I hear it, it's like, I can't separate it fully out from from the doing, and it goes back to that deeper question of, because the only place that I can even start to get in touch with how I feel is from, really, I need to do nothing, from, that's like the baseline, okay, wow, and then, then there's a chance of the feeling to whether this is, is, is inspiring or not, and yet there's so many incidences where you just get pulled into things that you, you either don't even get a chance to say you feel inspired or not, or you just get pulled because life takes you, so to speak, and you know it's part of the plan, and it works out so wonderfully. And yeah, I don't, I don't even know my question, but it's like, yeah, yeah. It's, I think the prayer of the heart is always to get get to the core of the matter. It's like when you opened up; it, it was so interesting. You were talking about uh, the little flower and Saint Teresa and and passing out with these different uh, sisters would leave, and you mentioned passing out and stabilize, and I was just sitting here because I just, uh, yesterday I think it was, saw that uh, movie of uh, Neil Armstrong, the story of Neil Armstrong and the first man on the moon, and, and uh, I just remembered that part where, you know, he signs up to be to one of the, try to be one of the astronauts to go there, and they get this group of guys there, and they have this, They've invented this gyrating machine where you get in it and you, you have to try to stabilize. Uh, that's the whole point. The only point is to get inside there, and it just gyrates faster and faster. And it just you're in this thing and it's whipping around, and, and you have this little thing that you need to kind of try to to stabilize because it's a, one of those early tests to be able to land the lunar, you know, the lunar module on the on the moon. But this is one of the early tests, and basically they say, uh, well, we'll just leave you in there, we'll just leave it running until you stabilize or you pass out. Uh, those were the two options that the, the commander was giving. And the, the guys, all these astronaut hopefuls are just like looking with their eyes wide open like, you gotta be kidding me, and then the commander goes, okay, Neil Armstrong, you're the first victim. Uh, <laughs> we get in there, and basically the instructions stabilize or pass out. And, and really that, when you come back to it, you know, only an instant does this world endure. It's like there's so many layers of egoic concepts and complexity that are covering over the basic wrong mind, right mind, unholy instant, holy instant, the choice for eternity, the choice for everlasting life, the choice for salvation, the choice for enlightenment is a choice, but it's covered over with all these layers and layers and layers and layers of things. And really the prayer of the heart is to, to, be, to find that, uh, that golden needle, so to speak. Uh, like I remember doing the course workbook one time, 
And Jesus was describing all these concepts in the deceived mind. And he says, salvation is among them. Find it. <laughs> I remember the first time I was doing the lesson, I'm like, okay. You know, almost like there's a needle in the haystack. And find it. Yeah, and of course that, that's what this is for. And of course it's about the stabilization, and it's, of course it's about the harmony. It's, it's about the love, it's about the joy, it's about the happiness. And, and yet, it, it did become very clear to me as I got deeper into the spiritual journey that I thought, well this is a path of negation. You have to, I thought, you have to find everything that's not it, to find it. Uh, and it, not in the sense of a quantity, but you have to do, find the root. You really got to get to the root and see the impossibility of the root in order to find the correction. And, and uh, so at some point, you know, you do, I think, adopt this kind of attitude of the adventure, like, okay, you're, you're in this gyrating thing called time and space and planet Earth and it's topsy-turvy and the things that the world deems as important or, or unimportant or valuable or not worth seeking, you know, that's all part of the, the scheme to distract the mind from this beautiful answer, this beautiful stabilization. And yet, um, it is a call into practice. You know, I'm always talking about practical application, practical application, to, you know, from our life together and everything we've done and all the things we've done, there takes so much focus, so much attentiveness, so much uh, devotion, you know, to really go down into that stabilization in a true way. And without that, it's just, you know, it seems at times like much ado about nothing. It seems like the mind is just kind of spinning like that machine that Neil Armstrong was in, spinning and gyrating in all kinds of ways. And yeah, even the shows today, it's amazing, you know, marriage proposals, uh, travels, uh, on an adventure in the Mediterranean, and, and I just, it's just a few instances that I caught. I was like, whoa, here we are, another typical uh, week of shows, and, and uh, there was no shortage of of uh, key topics or, or uh, pretty strong um, messages and pretty strong uh, situations that, that are calling on that st stabilization and that healing. And I was just sitting there meditating before we started and I thought, yeah, even with some of the things we're doing with like Spiri, that goes back a couple years. Uh, and uh, this moment is your monastery, that goes back a couple years, I would think a lot of the things that are just beginning to peak out and come to fruition uh, have been on the stove or in the oven cooking for quite some time and, and we can even lose track of that. You know, like I think you were as surprised as I was when I, I was like, Spiri is published. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> you know, that's probably how I'll be in whatever February when they release the book. I'll be like, what? What? You know, it's, you, you lose track. I remember in the old days too, I, these Course in Miracles conferences, back in, back in the day, they were like every two year. So I'm like, they're saying, will you commit to speak at this thing? And I said, when is it? And it's like, it's two years away on such and such a date in the Holiday Inn, Golden Gate or whatever, and I'm like, I'll pray about it. You know, for me it was the funniest thing to commit to something two years in advance. I mean, it seemed kind of funny and silly to me, but, but I would just pray and Jesus would tell me, yep, you're, you're, that's where you're supposed to be <laughs> speaking in two years from now. I'm like, okay. Yes, and then I would completely forget about it until it would get close to the time and then somebody would say, uh, oh, you're, you're speaking at that conference uh, next week and I'm good. What conference? And then, oh, you know, it, it just, it, so we can live in the moment. We, we can be clueless about the world and even the snow and, and the vehicles, the way they're parked and all the different things. It, it's just good to know that we can trust and we can be clueless and if, 
as Jesus says, if there's something you need to know, you will be told. Well, thank you. You know, that, that gives you self-permission to really relax, to not be tense, to not be concerned or worried, you know, to really smell the roses, really relax and, and really enjoy the moment. And then if there's something, you know, that, that there's something that you're to be, to be done through with or activated with, it will, it will be given. You can trust that. Interesting, because something happened the other day too, and like the ministry for a few days needed to go in a different direction and support something. The, this moment is your miracle. You know, it came in, there's a really call for support and and I could feel that. It wasn't, that wasn't the problem, but maybe it wasn't full alignment, I'm not sure. But what happened was the spirit all of a sudden in my mind just died. Like something died in it, like, like the app and the, the TV show and something with the tech shifted too. Oh, it wasn't going to be a one-stop um, website or something like that. So some kind of a vision or a dream. And I was just like, I was so dizzy. And I remember sitting in the bath thinking, Oh my God, this isn't about the app. This is about like anything I've ever had a vision that anything could ever be better. It just seems my life's the ministry, so it plays out here. But anything, any sense of improvement, like family situation was chosen that way to try to fix parent, everything. It was just like, and I was so dizzy and so much emotion like, oh my God, if I don't have anything to make better, what am I going to do with my life? <laughs> like, it was so overwhelming. And then... Yeah, I was part of the whole disorientation and disillusionment too. Like, but but something was real about it. So when do I go? And but wow, like if everything is literally I, that was just the other realization the other night too. When I was I was praying about some decision, and I think you came into my mind something ten years ago, and like nothing the ministry has ever done has been without the healing underneath. There's never been a thing, a real thing to do. You know, might, the words might come out because that's what's needed to be understood or sets a direction, but, but it was like somehow it really landed so much deeper that the old, that's how you can make all decisions now, is does it increase healing or expand healing? And if it's just a form decision and you can't get a sense of healing, that's how you know it's not guided or something. It was really cool. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. It's such a big let go. You know, it's it's so much the entire world is based on betterment. Um, betterment as human beings, betterment as the human race. Um, I remember there was a song too, uh, it was that the line was bitter or better. I thought, well, those are those are really tough options. Bitter or better? <laughs> it does sound like hell to me, because it's like there, that that can't be the answer, and uh, and yet for most people, the, they're like, well, it's the better is the the better is the better of bitter and better, you know. But but actually, better is a, is a very dualistic uh, concept, and that's what I loved about the course. It was just popping all this idea of self-improvement and, um, and, and improving the world and making the world a better place and uh, you know I mean the, the more uncompromising I got into this the more joyful I got and the more there seemed to be occasionally some reflections like you have lost it you are crazy you know I actually uh, uh, Jessica very uh, scanned a couple copies of a handwritten letter because there's a man in prison, Dale, who has just gone off the deep end with me. He's just, he's just going for it. He's like, uh, our, you know, our, our prison ministry is, he's in there and, and uh, like, what was that Hurricane movie, you know, where Hurricane Carter is in there, you know, working on his healing and grievance. Getting, go, letting go of grievances and healing. And here's Dale in there, and he writes this beautiful handwritten letter in red ink that ends with, uh, sorry about my handwriting, uh, uh, they sold my typewriter. <laughs> he, used to type, he used to type these letters with a typewriter out to me, and now it's just his handwriting. But basically, it was just nothing but truth, every line, every line. And then, am I, am I going crazy? 
you always say, how do you feel? I feel great, exclamation point, and then going on, on, if I really lost it, am I delusional? But it was all going into, he's just so going into the moment that, uh, you know, for him, he's, he sees the only purpose of prison is for him waking up and going home with a capital H. He said, I have no interest in going home with a small H. He's not interested in getting released, he's not interested in anything of the world. He's questioned family, he's questioned relationship, he's just in there dropping, dropping, dropping into that still empty mind, empty of concepts, and, and uh, writing out this beautiful, with all of this heart, you know, this beautiful two-page uh, letter that Jessica sent to me, and yeah, I don't even know how I'll reach him. I, <laughs> But I, in the sense that I could feel him in my heart, and, and he was saying, even you that I'm writing to are an illusion, but you are the illusion to help me wake up from this dream. You know, it was so heartwarming, but it, it is a, a big let go. You know, for many people they, they would think that that would be an extreme situation to be to be in prison. He's in there for a number of years, and, um, and yet he's just letting go into the moment and having a disregard for the things of this world. And, uh, and one little flare coming up, am I on the right track? Am I moving in the right direction? Ah, oh, Dale, wow, my heart, my heart is so with you. But that's what it is, you know, in the end we're not here to make a better anything. We're not here to make a better self, we're not here to, to improve, and we're not here to change the world. And that seems to be, to the ego, that's a little too far. You know, it's like the Course in Miracles and make the world a better place, or the Course in Miracles and improve yourself and actually that's not what the Course is teaching us, or it's not where the Course is leading us to a better anything. It's beautiful, thank you. Maybe that's why if, if there's people in the ministry that ever I feel aren't doing enough or something, it's because it's that belief underneath, you know, that something could be better if you got more people together or something, but yeah, it's not. Yeah. And then the other lesson that was kind of coming in was like to just know the whole picture just takes, I don't know, just a lot of trust in, in the moment and being open-minded, like, yeah. We can all get pigeonholed in our projects, but just to really be so open to each other that, yeah. It's not much on that, I'm kind of going quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's just a point where everything dissolves and, uh, but it, you know, you, it's, I think it's that point of seeing miracles are involuntary, like, I think it's that point that, uh, where you see that Jesus is behind, behind all of it, everything. I mean, and, and we just, that's the only lesson there is to learn. I remember sitting there in the, the movie watching that, going to the moon and all the, the millions and hundreds of millions of dollars and the race with, uh, with uh, Russia to, uh, first, to get the first man in space and the first man on the moon and all these things. And, and, uh, and at the time I was just watching the movie and uh, Svava just leaned over and said, what a silly idea, all that time and energy put on putting a man on the moon. But uh, it all seems silly to me. The whole world is a silly idea. There's not, you know, in the end you, you go beyond right and wrong and morality in the world. You go beyond the nuances of better and worse. You, you know, in the end, ultimately with the atonement, you, you have to go beyond discernment of this, this situation or this behavior is more helpful than that one. All the nuances that are part of the mind training that you have to embrace you have to give yourself over and say, you know, I need help. I, like uh, Ricky and 
Emily were talking on the show, like, I, I just totally have to admit that nothing I've ever seemed to do, or anything of the world, uh, nothing has ever really helped me or harmed me. It's just that I have to come to a place of surrender, of openness. And of all those characteristics of a teacher of God, the first one is trust. And it's the most important one because all the rest follow from it. But the last one is open-mindedness of really going so far into that trust that you can say, truthfully, I do not know the thing I am, what I'm doing, where I'm going, how to look upon myself or the world. It's a total brand new experience. It's a total open, empty experience. Uh, it's like there's a sense of, of complete, it's like the complete Magoo mind or the complete Chauncey Gardner I don't understand anything. And that's the pinnacle. That's what it's all for. You know, sometimes people, I've had a friend of mine years ago who went out to the woods to live at a hermitage with me. And I remember she started doing the workbook lessons. And when she got to number one, nothing I see means anything, she said, this is terrible. This is awful. And then the more she got into those early lessons, she's like, it's going to get better, isn't it? I mean, these are like the preliminary, and I, I remember just laughing, going, no, actually, it's all right there in lesson one. <laughs> I mean, it's, like, it's not like a, a commun co co kind of a building, a commun commutative uh, building, collective kind of thing. It's just, it's just a surrender into, I, I am not in control. I, do not understand this world. Uh, somebody just recently wrote to me, says, uh, it said in the Course that before you can understand anything, you must first forgive. You have to forgive it before you can understand anything. She was like saying, what, what does that even mean? But, but that let go is what forgiveness is all about. It really is a humble point of, of not trying to figure the world out anymore, not trying to control it or or manage it in any way. It's that, that is the surrender. So that's what I think, you know, you're on the cusp of, and I think Jesus is going to make you a mystic yet, whether you <laughs> want, seem to want it on the surface or not. <laughs> Ramana Warwick. <laughs> yeah, I want the deep, quiet mind, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I thought, yeah, maybe we could just open it up and kind of just see where everybody's at, either in our community of the internet and whether you're living with us or not, if anybody had any questions or experiences they wanted to bring forth. Oh, wow, now I see everyone, gallery view here. <laughs> Well, this is fun to see. <laughs> uh, it is beautiful. Oh yeah, because we have we have a new system too. So some Zoom. There's people here on Zoom, but there's a bunch that are also on uh, being streamed through YouTube. So they can't ask questions, but they can type something. Oh, there's Jan in Holland. That's beautiful. This could be my shortest show ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, everyone's there. There's, forget her name in Sweden, Bridget Thomas. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, it's like a feeling that sometimes when you go to sink so deep inward, it's almost like a, the ego could say, oh, this is not going well. It's, you're going to end up just an aimless wanderer. And, and uh, you know, this isn't a sense of aimlessness. It's a sense like you, you peace is, is no small goal, but it's just that present peace is a different goal than any of us have ever gone for. You know, because we think of goals as future, and we think of goals as ambition, and changing something in the world, and even make things better. And present peace is, is no small goal. It's just that we have to let go of all of our ideas about goals to experience it, and to just be swallowed up in, in that. But, um, Part of the joy of, of us sharing our miracles and speaking these things is, is to, it's almost like it's spirits just cheering us on, saying, keep coming, it's okay to keep letting go. Uh, it's, you're, you're not going to end up in a, in a disaster, you're going to end up have a, having such a blissful experience. And, and so that's why we're sharing the miracles, that's why we're talking about these things. It, it, it didn't come about through past learning, it hasn't come about through doing, but there is this experience that's just so available. It's always like saying, I'm here, I'm here, I love you, I'm here, I'm here. And, and it's more like a, a let go or a drop to come into that experience, but it's it's not a formula, it's not a, a, a series of doings, which everything else in our experience in time and space is all about doing this, doing that, achieving this, achieving that, and, and this is, is more of a, like dropping through a, a ring of dissatisfaction and then into the stillness that's underneath this dissatisfaction. And, mm. How sweet, how sweet it is. So beautiful being with all of you. It wasn't long ago where I just put out any invitations to come and travel. There's, there's Catherine, I visited her and I just glanced at that paper that recently I saw, yeah. John, there I saw, I saw a number of those, and and yet it's all just so wide open for me. I just, yeah, just feel such gratitude though for all of you. Such deep gratitude. Mm. There's a hand up. Yes. Um, I'm not really sure how to put this, but it, the, the topic is, seems really relevant to what's going on in my life. Um, because I've been retired for a year and a half now, and, and I've gotten some things that I do on a regular basis in terms of uh, getting together with people having classes and, and going to classes. And, but most of the time I'm spending is uh, sitting and reading the course in one form or another, watching you guys. And, uh, and I feel like there, there needs to be more volunteer work and I've done some, but not too much. Sorry about the noise in the background. <clears throat> but the, uh, the motivation to do is just not there. I just don't have, I mean, I, I've tried to put together lists of things to do around the house, and that's what I've been doing a lot, just to keep, keep myself from <laughs> being uh, um, welded to the, the cops that I sit on so that I uh, don't melt into a puddle of, <laughs> of non-doing, I guess. But <clears throat> the uh, part of what's happened during this time is that I, I – find myself wanting so much 
to to grow, to understand, to get lessons, to be free of different things, and, and that certainly has happened. Uh, but I've also seen a whole lot recently and gotten messages from people and also just insight and understanding or messages from Spirit or Jesus that <clears throat> you don't have to work, you don't have to do this. Um, study, 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 and try to get, 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 get. Um, but it feels like there's just not this summary understanding of the course. Mm. Penetrates me into um, mm. a stable, mind, peaceful mind. So listening to you guys, it's easy reading. It's easy to be peaceful and in that place of stillness. And and even I had a class where I, on Saturday and there was like 11 of us. And I had gone before that, I, the class, I was anxious about the class and feeling guilty because I forgot to notify everybody that the class was happening this week. And, and uh, but then I, I looked at that and asked Spirit to help me with it and saw that, you know, I'm innocent. There's no reason to be guilty. So I went to the class and I was in, I was in peace and really happy. And, and I was kind of amazed at how much wisdom there is in the group. Um, <laughs> so, and I, and I, part of that, the lesson for that day was, uh, I choose to see my brother's sinlessness. And uh, that was happening with me throughout the day. And I had this incredible day. Um, but I think, I think what I'm feeling is like, like there's more progress happening. <laughs> the, the impatience is there that I just want to rest in peace. Then that's really what I want. And, and the mind keeps going off, off onto different things. But, you know, I'm just kind of rambling and I'm not really know, know what the question is, but uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Thank you. I, I feel, I hear your call for, again, we're back to what Jason was talking about, for that stability, for that, that depth and that harmony, that experience. And uh, this kind of topic that you're bringing up, this is a very common topic. I know uh, with so many people, Eric and I have talked about this many times where, where there can be a very kind of a subtle inertia that comes in, uh, like you were sharing, like I'm not, not feeling motivated to do. And then there's a, like a judgment on top of that um, feeling. And, and that doesn't feel good either. And um, it's almost like there's, there's a switch deeper in the mind and it's like, but there's too many layers of interference that are blocking the switch. But the prayer is I want to, I want to reach down there and and click that switch, you know, really feel that vibrancy uh, that's that. And, but I think that's part of the journey is starting to be aware of um, just like the old story of the princess and the pea, even when you have a little minor discomforts, just starting to allow yourself to be aware of those. That's a big step, you know, to not try to push anything away or gloss anything over, but just say, no, I'm going to I give myself permission to be aware of everything. I want to be aware. I want to be aware in my mind. There's sometimes there can be like, um, I call it ego comfort zones, where the mind just has, has like put all these pillows around it, like Lisa sometimes talked about when she would travel with me. She was so afraid of the love that she would go in the back seat and just barricade herself uh, with pillows, and then I look in the rearview mirror and she didn't <laughs> cover her eyes. <laughs> she didn't want to look me in the eye. But, but there was, there, you, start to, you have to start to see the defenses and you have to start to feel, okay, if I'm drawn to certain distractions, let me be aware of that. Let me, let me pay attention. I'm worth that. I'm worth the noticing. I'm worth the being aware. Of, of everything. I'm worthy of that awareness. And, and that's a big step. 
of what the journey is. It's not some kind of big thing like to do or not to do. Uh, Shakespeare, that isn't Shakespeare's famous thing, to do or not to do. It's to be or not to be, that is the question. And yet the ego tries to reframe Shakespeare and go, oh no, forget that. To do or not to do, you know, it always is trying to put it off on behavior, put it off on, on something else as a way of like keeping the mind asleep. So I think it's good, even you raising your hand and, and being, wanting to uh, explore this, you know, that is that spark inside you that that knows that you are so worthy of love and knows that you are worthy of, of going through this seeming sorting out that's happening. And then when you went to that class and you felt just the love and the innocence, there it is again. It's a beautiful reminder there. It's always there. It's always there. It hasn't gone anywhere. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm, thank you. Thank you. There's the monastery, Dan. I um, I have a question. I mean, it ties right in with what David and Dennis were just referring to, and it's like the there's a sense that that I'm not feeling the love that is all around me. I mean, there are, there are witnesses that um, I am loved. And yet there's something that's like saying, yeah, it's nice, but it's not the depth. There's not really, like you really haven't experienced real love. And um, that's far, far away. And, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm focusing on, on uh, the things that I that I do and here at the monastery and and um, with Marie and Willow and Michael and everyone that's here. You know, all of that is is like supportive and but yeah, I, I was just in my room just shortly a while ago and was like, there's there's something just not being satisfied completely and it's. And it just it just feels like ego trying to sabotage me, but you know i'm I'm really wanting to i don't know just experience this this depth that as of yet i sometimes I just don't feel like i i i've i've had i've, I've i just haven't felt it yet so I guess that that's it's more of a like a, a statement of what seems to be happening as opposed to a question per se but um I think maybe it's just part of the process. I, I just wanted to share that. Okay, the bells went off. I'm watching you, Dan, and I've got Jesus standing on your shoulder from where I sit, and the bells are ringing, and <laughs> it's really, I'm like thinking, wow, things are looking pretty good from this angle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, that whole thing about depth too, you know, that's, it's like, it's the ego's main thing is comparison, so it's not like we have to figure out a way to stop comparing, or it's not like a way we have to figure out how to stop judging, it's that we just have to come to one moment of of honesty and realize that we could never have judged in the first place. It was never I who could compare. It was never I who could judge. It was never I that knew what depth was and whatever else isn't depth. You know, that's like that's like saying, well, there is a depth, but it's trying to convince us that there is a real depth and you're not there. <laughs> you know, it's it's really trying to to convince you of, of that, but there just has to come a realization like it's just, it just cannot be so. Like when people would talk to me about, I got that question all over the world, I would do all these gatherings and people would say, how do you do it? How do you, how do you stop judging? 
And I said, how do you stop judging? That's like, how do you stop a runaway freight train that's going down a steep mountain? Uh, you don't really stop it. You just have to, to see that that's impossible. That's the, that's the release. And, and so that's the prayer of the heart. We're just praying for the witnesses of, of the happiness, of the joy, of, of the beings that will come and remind us to not take any of it seriously, no matter what these thoughts are trying to tell us, no matter what these egoic thoughts are trying to convince us of, it's just not so. And, uh, and that's the joy, that's the, the mighty companions, that's the camaraderie, that's the fellowship. Uh, and, and even to reach out and just to just say, I don't know, say, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling the depth, I'm not feeling the joy. Even that is, there's a transparency for that. There's a call there. It's an active call of, of saying, please join me in the truth. You know, please join me in what's real and true. And that's beautiful, too. I love that. I'm, I'm so grateful for you. And I know you've just gone, in terms of the dream world, you've gone through some pretty uh, extreme things recently, but that just shows, when I was reading those on Twitter and, and hearing those, and hearing about some of your encounters there as you were going through your recovery, I was just smiling from ear to ear, because nobody would believe that, that, that you could extend so much love uh, in a position where you seem to be the, the client, <laughs> you were the client, and yet you were beaming and radiating stronger than ever. And I said, wow, that's a mind-blowing uh, experience to be laid there and let people uh, take care of you and, and then start talking about the Course or whatever and have them, what? What's that? Tell me more. You know, you were, you were preaching from the bed. <laughs> That's got to be the best, the best way to preach, you know. <laughs> Laid back, all strung out, and, and there's your pulpit. But, but people don't think of that. They just don't think of themselves, of, of having a bed as a pulpit. Uh, but you got to go through some just amazing experiences. And that, I think, too, is heartwarming, too, because, you know, it just shows again how we don't know our own best interests. Uh, we may pray for extension, but we don't actually know the form that it will come in. And sometimes we're so happily surprised, it just takes our breath away. Like, oh my God, I could never have known that. So, so I would keep that in mind, too, you know, I'm glad that that you can, we can recall that. And, and I'm glad I can recall the joy of those miracles because to the world, you know, it, it may not have looked like a miracle through the ego's lens. It may have looked like something went wrong. But you and I know something was going right. Something was going amazingly right. And, and you and I know that that was actually an answer to a prayer. You were having your prayers answered with that. And, and thank God we can, we can have our prayers answered like that, you know, even though it's very unexpected and very seemingly uh, surprising sometimes. Yeah. Or pretty dramatic. <laughs> pretty extreme, yeah. <laughs> For some of you that are, that are watching that don't know the backstory, why Dan and I are laughing is Dan fell off a roof, a, a, a pretty, it was a pretty big uh, drop too. And, uh, and yet we're, we're smiling and sharing the miracle now, but uh, yeah, it was kind of an extreme, uh, extreme thing for sure. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm really grateful for, uh, for everyone's support and uh, for the, the amazing, uh, yeah, it felt it felt like a ministry. And when I was talking to uh, Jason about next steps after having gone through the first couple of weeks of re uh, rehabilitation, he said it seems like something 
almost along the, the lines of a, a, of a kind of ministry. I, uh, wow, I never thought about that. <laughs> Seems so unlikely, but it was really, uh, it was amazing what it really was. Five or six weeks. Hmm. And then this is too. It's just so beautiful here. And I love these guys that I'm with. Thank you. Yeah, we can think of it. It's like we have all these hidden gifts and the Spirit just wants to pull them up, all up, up and out, up through us. And what a, what a way to, to allow the dream to unfold is to let your gifts be brought up to the fore and, and to shine through you, you know. And, and I know that's what the opportunities are. And with the upcoming Silent Retreat, the Beloveds coming there, you know, you'll just be smiling and shining and sharing and, and letting the Spirit uh, flow through you, which is your greatest, greatest joy. And, and uh, we, we love that, you know, it's just, I love seeing all the gifts flowering. And I love that among, when I look at all the people that are here online, I can see that. I can, I've watched you, I've watched your gifts start to emerge and, and in our community, I've, I've watched these collaborations and these gifts emerge with gifts of all kinds of technical collaborations, music collaborations, collaborations in putting together videos, putting together a, a documentary. I just am, Quite amazed. I think they're they're just beginning to work on uh, something we do every year in the ministry called A to Z, where it's just all these amazing things that have come through, and it seems like every time that happens, we reach the end of a seeming calendar year, and I, I look at the A to Z stuff, and I'm just blown away. I am just like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine all those gifts that poured through in just one seeming calendar year. It just, it's hard to fathom. So, yeah, I hope you're just as blessed as I am. And I think we, Mary, did you have your did, hand up? I thought I saw your hand go up there. Yeah. Oh, there we yeah. go. First of all, thank you. I, I can hardly express um, how uh, grateful I am to all of you for um, for being the witness and being the um, testimony to what's possible, to what's always there. Um, I've been a part of the online retreats and the and the Sunday shows. I've been doing all this. I can so relate to Dennis. Um, because I've been retired for about uh, two and a half years, and all of a sudden it's like, what the hell now? Uh, thinking that now I was going to go deeply into the course, and uh, my ego created mold in my crawl space. I got sick. I thought everything was everything in my home was gone. I, you know, all this stuff happened. Um, so that all amazingly turned around in a 24 hour period. Anyway, um, and then there were all these quote unquote emergencies with family, so I can see how this journey has just been letting it be and allowing it and not getting too caught up in the drama of the whole thing. Um, and I also wanted to share the <laughs> part of my, I'm, I am such a doer, I can so, uh, so get that. And I've had this thing that I need to go to the monastery, I need to go to retreat, I need to go, you know, this is what's gonna save me. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't been able to do that. It hasn't happened. And I've had to step back and say, okay, Mary, you are not in charge here. And this may not, just because you think this is what, the way it's got to look, that doesn't mean that that's the best thing for you and spirit knows. So it's just been a, a whole process of, and, and there's, a, there's a whole section in chapter 21 of the course that I really um, looked at, and it's just like standing on the edge of not knowing. And I've got, you know, three college degrees, worked with, you know, gifted children, very bright kids, developed all this curriculum, so I know. <laughs> and so... <laughs> <laughs> So standing at the edge of not knowing, uh, um, 
that I don't need to go to the monastery, that I don't know what's best for me, that um, just being quiet in the moment is, is all there is. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, beautiful. Thank you for speaking your, your heart. Thank you. What a great laughter. That, that moment of laughter was for the whole universe, undoing the I know mind of the whole universe. It just rippled out over the whole, <laughs> the whole cosmos. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, that's a very quiet afternoon. <laughs> Yeah, thank you everyone. It's been a nice show. Thanks, David, for coming on and just... Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jason. Always a joy. Yeah, I love you guys. It feels very silent. A nice, a new experience for me, so... I guess we'll pass it off to Jeff and have another great week. We'll see you in our morning shows, possibly. Thank you.